Hello everyone. Just a quick recap of the Kirchhoff's current law using nodal analysis. Now, Kirchhoff's current law or KCL is a very popular tool used in circuit analysis. What it basically says is that the algebraic sum of currents into a node is zero. So what this means is that given a node, say A, that has several branches connected to it, Okay, each of these are also nodes. Say this is R1, R2, R3 and R4. Let the currents flowing in each of these branches be I1, I2, I3 and I4. What KCL says is that the algebraic sum of these currents that are entering a node is zero. By algebraic, we mean that we are taking into account the direction of the flow of current by considering a particular sign associated with that direction. So as a convention, let plus be the sign denoting the current that is entering a node. Okay, and let a negative sign denote the current exiting the node. Now, if the algebraic sum of currents into a node is to be zero, this basically implies that considering the direction of currents, the summation should be zero. Okay, So, I1 is flowing into the node and we take a plus reference for entering the node. So, we write I1. I2 is exiting the node. So, minus I2. I3 is also exiting the node. So minus I3, I4 is entering the node, so plus I4. This is equal to 0. This is another way of saying that I1 plus I4 is equal to I2 plus I3. That means that currents or rather summation of current entering a node is equal to the summation of current exiting the node. This follows very simply from conservation of charge that whatever current is entering a given node, the same must be exiting that node. Okay. Now, KCL can very simply be implemented using nodal analysis. Nodal analysis basically refers to finding these currents using node voltages. All right. So if node voltage, say this is node A and I associate a voltage VA to this node. These are other nodes. Let me associate say V1, V2, V3 and V4. These are the node voltages. Now one must understand that node voltages are measured with, with respect to ground okay, and not with respect to each other. A node voltage refers to the voltage of that particular node with respect to ground. Now for us to be able to write currents uh, in terms of uh, node voltages. It's important to understand that when we say that there's a current flowing through a resistor in this direction I, we assume that the terminal from which current was entering is at a higher potential than the terminal through which the current was exiting. That is why we say there is a potential drop across this resistor. Based on what is the direction that you have assumed for a particular branch, you need to write the current equation accordingly. So what does that tell us? I'll rewrite the expression of uh, what KCL basically states. What it said was current entering the node should be equal to current exiting the node. So current entering node A are I1 and I4 and current exiting this node is I2 and I3. Okay. What is I1? I1 is the current flowing in this direction. That is what our assumption is. Since current flows from a node of higher potential to a node of lower potential, we can say the current is basically the drop across this potential upon the resistance. The drop across this potential because it's flowing in this direction, we would assume that V1 is at a higher potential than 
VA and then I1 therefore becomes V1 minus VA upon R1. Similarly, I2, this is the direction of I2 flowing from VA to V2. So, I2 becomes VA minus V2 because the direction is from A to node 2 upon R2. Similarly, I3 is in this direction flowing from A to another node 3. So, I3 is VA minus V3 upon R3 and in the same way R I4 flowing in this direction refers to our assumption that V4 would be at a higher potential than VA. So, I4 is V4 minus VA upon R4. Now, when you plug in these expressions of current into the actual KCL and solve it in terms of uh, node voltages, we may in the end uh, find that the direction of current that we originally assumed is not actually the correct direction of current because then that value would come out to be negative. Let us just demonstrate that using a very simple example. Now the question is, if I want to use nodal analysis, I need to assign node voltages to each node. So let me assign this node a node voltage VA, which is unknown. And this is the other node, say VB. And since this is grounded, VB is equal to 0. Okay. Let me assume some direction of current, say this is I1 and this is purely an assumption to start with. Okay. So let this be I2, let this be I3. Okay. KCL says that summation of I into a node should be equal to 0 or the current entering a node should be equal to the current exiting the node. Okay. What does this tell me? That what is the current entering the node? I1 is entering, I2 is entering, I3 is also entering and nothing is exiting. So this is equal to 0. Okay. How can I write each of I1 and I2? I1 is flowing from node B to node VA via the 2 ohm resistor. So, I1 can be written as 32 minus VA upon 2. This is because I initially assumed that the direction of I1 is this. I2 in the same way is flowing from node B to VA via resistor 8 ohm. Node B is at a voltage v, uh, 0. So, 0 minus VA upon 8 because this is my assumed direction of current. I3 is in this direction. So, I can write 20 minus VA because the positive terminal of 20 volt voltage source is actually towards node VA. So, 20 minus VA upon 4. This is what is I3. If I solve this, if I plug this into this equation 1, I would get 32 minus VA upon 2 plus minus VA upon 8 plus 20 minus VA upon 4. This is equal to 0. If I solve this further, I should get 8 is the LCM. I will get 4 into 32 minus VA minus VA plus 2 into 20 minus VA is equal to 0. Solving it further would mean 168 is equal to 7 VA, which implies that VA would come out to be 24 volts. Okay, But this is not what was asked in the question. This is what is going to help us find each of these currents because we just defined each of these currents in terms of the node voltage, VA, right? So once we know VA, all we have to do is just plug VA into these expressions and we will have the values of our currents. That gives us I1 is 32 minus 24 upon 2, which is 4 ampere. I2 is minus 24 upon 8 which is minus 3 ampere and I3 is 20 
minus 24 upon 4 which is minus 1 ampere what this basically tells us is that when the sign of the current comes out to be negative it means that the direction that we initially assumed that is not the direction in which the current is flowing it's flowing in the opposite direction so if i was to rewrite what are the actual currents in this uh, circuit i could write i1 that is correct this is the direction and the current that flows is 4 amperes i2 came out to be minus 3 that means i2 does not really flow in this direction it flows downwards and has a value 3 ampere and i3 does not really flow in this direction it flows in the opposite direction and has a magnitude 1 ampere this is how you use nodal analysis and KCL to find currents through a given circuit. Now in this question, we only had voltage sources. If we were to have current sources, for instance, how are we going to solve this question? Let us see using another very simple example. So the question is calculate the current through the 8 ohm resistor, which I'm referring to as I 8 ohm. 8 ohm is in subscript to show what is the current I through 8 ohm resistor. The circuit is this. This is a 2 ohm resistor, a 4 ohm resistor, an 8 ohm resistor. You've got a voltage source of 20 volts on this side. And you've got a current source of 1 ampere. It's an ideal current source of 1 ampere on this side. This side is ground. This node is grounded. Calculate I8 if I say using nodal analysis. If you wanted to use Kirchhoff's voltage law, it would be difficult at first to contemplate what is the voltage drop across this current source because it is an ideal current source. The basic definition of a current source is that it should provide you with a constant current irrespective of what is the drop across it. That means the drop across it can be anything. So a viable way of proceeding would be to use nodal analysis and KCL in such questions. As before, I define this node as A having a nodal voltage VA and this, is, this node is grounded, so it has node voltage 0. Right? I assume some direction of current. Say this is I1, this is I2, and this is I3. Now one must understand that assuming the direction of current in the beginning is up to us. All right. It is after solving, we will come to know whether the direction was correct or it was actually the opposite direction. Now, I could as well choose this direction as I3 in this direction. Okay. In that case, what would I write? I would write KCL as I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. So it completely depends on how you are defining, how you are assuming the direction of current in the beginning. So suppose this is the direction of currents I assume. So I can write I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 by KCL at node A, I1 is 1 ampere because we have an ideal current source that provides 1 ampere current. Since this 2 ohm resistor is in series with, the, with this current source, it's the same amount of current that flows through this resistor. So the current in this branch is basically 1 ampere. What is I2? I2 is the current in this branch. Since it is flowing from this side to this side, I'm assuming that 20 volt is higher than VA and I write this expression, this I2 as 20 minus VA upon 4. This should be equal to I3. I3 is flowing from node A to the ground. So I write it as VA minus 0 upon 8. Solving this, I'll get VA is equal to 16 volt and please cross check this. With VA is equal to 16 volt, 
the current through the eight ohm resistor which is actually i3 is simply va minus 0 upon 8 that means 16 upon 8 that is 2 ampere this is the answer this is how you use kcl in circuits that have current sources as well we'll continue this discussion with more questions thank you for now